Hoi, I'm Piet van der Berg from Rynet. Uh, my name is Raymond de Wijze, and together with Esther Hoyer, I am here on behalf of the Support Center for Data Sharing. Um, before I give the floor to you and ask you to introduce yourself, I'll give a brief introduction of the Support Center, um, which we abbreviate with SCDS. Um, at SCDS, um, we believe that uh, data is very valuable, but they, it, the potential of data can truly be unlocked when it's shared. Um, the Support Center is set up as an EU initiative that's designed to foster data sharing between organizations, both public and private. Um, and we do so by not only researching, but also showcasing um, best, best uh, practical examples uh, and getting in touch with those organizations that share data. Um, besides, we also provide support, both technical and legal, uh, to organizations who wish to share data. Uh, and we promote its benefits we also highlight the barriers, some of the reluctancies for organizations to share data, and how to overcome these barriers. Um, and in that setting, today we are interviewing uh, Rob and Pete van der And uh, I would like to give the floor to you to introduce yourself and Ryan and please. Well, thank you. I'm uh, Rob Loy. Uh, I work as an advisor with the Renus Foundation. Um, I know Renus. Um, for a long time already. Uh, and I'll talk to you about uh, what REN stands for uh, in just a few minutes. Uh, okay, <clears throat> my name is uh, Piet van der Berg, uh, a, a REN uh, employee for uh, uh, a few years. Uh, within REN, I'm um, the account uh, slash uh, business development manager. Uh, previously, I was uh, a product manager uh, and um, I'm looking forward to, to this interview. Thanks. Thank you. So are we. I haven't. Uh, I haven't asked you, but Esther, please go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Ray, and uh, great to uh, have you here today from uh, Reynes. Uh, my name is Esther Hulia. I'm um, project lead of the support center for data sharing that Ray just uh, introduced to us, and. Um, Again, uh, a great addition to our efforts to document inspiring and successful um, facilitators and initiatives in the sphere of data sharing. So thanks a lot and I'm very curious for your presentation. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, uh, you shared the slides with us. Perhaps you want to go ahead um, and do the presentation, or do you want to um, get into uh, a talk first? No, let, let's start with the presentation, uh, please, uh, Raimondo. Okay, sure, uh, whenever you're ready, go ahead. Yeah, the first question is, uh, what is Renus? It's uh, a fairly small uh, company uh, that uh, delivers platform services for international uh, data exchange for uh, uh, Dutch public uh, companies. Uh, it was set up uh, nearly uh, 25 years uh, ago. Um, and the idea uh, was to implement uh, what we know now as the once only uh, principle. Uh, the idea is that uh, a change in the position of a citizen that affects one public organization can also affect uh, its position in another uh, public organization and the organization should uh, exchange the, the data uh, uh, rather than uh, force uh, the citizen to uh, address various uh, uh, public organizations for the for the same uh, purpose. Um, that's the, 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 the first initiative. Uh, after that, uh, there was a huge wave in not only the Netherlands, um, and it is uh, to relieve the administrative burden for citizens and companies, and that boosted up uh, the exchange of data uh, between public organizations and between uh, private organizations with, with public tasks. Uh, the, the next wave uh, was to prevent citizens and companies to, for making uh, mistakes, uh, misuse and, and fraud. And the latest trends we try to support is um, 
citizens in control uh, rather than uh, exchange data uh, for the citizen between uh, public organizations. Uh, the citizens uh, are, must be in a position to supply uh, data to organizations uh, uh, themselves. In the, in the next slide, um, you can see the, the, the organizations that uh, participate in uh, the Renus Foundation. At the moment, 11, 11 uh, public organization uh, with uh, various tasks in, in, in the public services. And you can see the, the growth um, in the in the slide. Uh, at the moment, uh, we handle more than two billion uh, exchange of personal data per year on a population of uh, 17 million people. So there is a lot of traffic uh, uh, over your data in, in, the, in the Dutch situ situation. Um, we don't, uh, we are also in the area of uh, international data exchange. Um, as you can see in the in the next slide. Uh, Renus is um, a single point of contact for uh, an EU secure tester network. Um, it's provided by uh, by the EU uh, and facilitating uh, uh, data exchange, secure data exchange uh, within the EU for uh, public organizations. Um, the second area Renus is in is uh, the European exchange in the social sec security. Um, the aberration is uh, AZI. Uh, in the Netherlands, uh, there are two public organizations uh, participating uh, in this data exchange. Um, and within the, the EU, uh, there are more than 4,000 public organizations active in um, uh, electronic data exchange rather than uh, the, the, the paperwork uh, that was done uh, before the initiative of the EU uh, of uh, AZ. Uh, and the aim of the EU is uh, to help uh, uh, <coughs> people uh, accessing uh, uh, work and, and uh, social security in, in other com companies in, in an easy way. Um, the third initiative we are in uh, in uh, the international uh, data exchange is the implementation partner of the EU uh, building blocks. Uh, not only the EU is um, active um, in reg regulating uh, electronic data exchange, but it also delivers uh, system building blocks uh, to help uh, um, organizations to, to set up easily uh, data exchange. Um, Renus uses that uh, also uh, on a national scale uh, in the uh, e-procurement uh, area. Uh, this is uh, exchanging um, uh, data uh, between uh, suppliers and government uh, uh, bodies. Um, and the last, and that is a big upcoming uh, one, and Pete uh, can explain it uh, more in detail, is where the implementation partner for programs uh, such as the Single Digital Gateway. Um, and Pete, please um, uh, explain more in detail about what the Single Digital Gateway stands for. Uh, yes, I will, uh, uh, Rob. Um, uh, the EU um, uh, called for a more uh, comprehensive, uh, more user-friendly package of information to, uh, to, to help citizens and business uh, in their cross-border uh, uh, exchange of, of information. And a lot of data uh, has to be uh, transported from uh, between, uh, between uh, member states and, uh, to do so and to, to streamline the internal market. Uh, to, uh, to facilitate the cross-border uh, exchange of information, uh, uh, um, 
a single deal the gateway has been set up uh, in a regulation uh, and uh, all the uh, member states are uh, obliged to to implement uh, the the single deal the gateway um, uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of um, uh, information uh, 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 streamlined between the, between the, the 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 member states, and one major topic is the one zoning principle. Like Rob said, um, uh, Rina started uh, uh, some kind of uh, one zoning principle 25 years ago. Uh, 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 deliver it once and use it uh, more times uh, uh, by the public administrations. Um, and uh, the one zoning principle is now being set up as a uh, as a building block uh, by the by the uh, uh, European Union. And uh, within the Netherlands, we are now setting up a um, a um, better version of our uh, one zoning principle. Uh, and key for that uh, for that uh, one zoning principle is, of course, uh, the the. Um, uh, how, how are we going to forward the information? How do we? What's the security level on the on the use of in the, of the use of in the, uh, the information? How is it being stored? Who's getting access to it? Uh, and uh, one of the the the, the new ways uh, 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 Rinis is, uh, uh, is servicing our uh, partners is being uh, by being in, in some kind of trusted partner. Uh, and um, I think that it's um, it's an upcoming uh, uh, a service, and uh, single the gateway is uh, is um, is uh, is a vehicle that promotes the, the use of it. I, I hope uh, that it's clear. If not, uh, please ask. Yeah, I'm thinking um, from a citizen perspective. Um, why would we need this? <laughs> that, it, it, it's a good question. Um, uh, 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 um, the, the, the idea between the single digital gateway is that uh, that, that citizens uh, can move within uh, within Europe, within the European Union. So uh, you are you live, you are born in the Netherlands. You want to work in Germany or France or you, uh, so there are a, a number of live events uh, while you're abroad that needs uh, and you need information from your from your uh, country of origin, uh, and then you have to exchange the information. Uh, uh, but when you are in um, in uh, Spain and you go to the Spanish uh, website, uh, at least I don't understand uh, Spanish. So uh, what I want. That is that uh, the, the 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 Spanish uh, um, uh, regulation is presented to me in Dutch. Uh, I can use the Spanish uh, uh, electric forms to fill in my my uh, my my data, and it will be used in in Spain for a birth certificate, or uh, if you want to marry to get married, or if you want to buy a house, or something like that. So there were a number of live events. Uh, which help you as a citizen to uh, to uh, go cross border and 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 to live and work uh, there, and of course for business it's the same, but then more for the for uh, the business administration. Yes, yeah, so I, I can imagine that it relieves a lot of work um, for the organizations itself, right? It's a lot more efficient if you if you would have such a, a single digital gateway. Yes, and. Um, um, uh, it helps you as a citizen. You, so, so the one's only principle is that you. I give my 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 social security number, my name, my my, my date of birth to one uh, public organization, and um, I grant them to use it for several other things. But I want to be in control of my own data. I want to know who has used it, when it when it is used, and and and, and limited use. And. Um, um, uh, by be, by setting up a trusted uh, some kind of trusted network, you can uh, you can put another organization into control of that. Um, and I, I think it's it's it can be a huge uh, step forward. Uh, but it uh, I agree it's it's a lot of work. Um, uh, um, all the member states have to implement it on the same in the same way. 
So the rest to be one. Um, uh, 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 how do we say that? We have to discuss it uh, across border. How to implement it? Yeah, because I can imagine also different countries have different perceptions of what they want. Um, uh, different maybe topics to focus on first. Different priorities. Um, how do you how do you manage that? Yeah, and also different processes. So uh, the, the process in Netherlands is another process than in Germany. Uh, so how can you combine the, those processes? This it, it's it's an, a lot of work uh, to be done by the end of I believe uh, 2024. Um, uh, but it's what I said. I, I think it's a step forward. Definitely, that's ambitious. 2024. <laughs> 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 and I was wondering, we have many national initiatives and, and procedures that already work well around uh, government citizen data exchange. In the Netherlands, uh, we have DigiD and, and with your BSN number, um, you're, you can go, go everywhere and, and data is already being shared. Will, uh, will a European-wide approach for that be complementary? Um, to those existing procedures, or will it replace them, build on them? How do you see that? From a perspective of the single data gateway, uh, you mean? There were, there were two. Uh, um, there were two main building blocks or, or standards uh, being used for the implementation of the one only principle, and that is uh, e-delivery or a, a secure, uh, a, a reliable uh, message exchange. And uh, AIDAS for the for the electronic identity, uh, and uh, in the Netherlands, DigiD will be used as our national uh, electronic identity uh, within the AIDAS uh, Act uh, of AIDAS uh, uh, legislation. Understood. Thank you. So national standards will uh, comply to the uh, the uh, European standards. That's that's the idea. Thank you. Well, that Thank was uh, the work we do in um, in brief in the international field. Um, not only uh, within uh, the EU, but uh, also to towards uh, other countries. Um, and uh, we see uh, that uh, the uh, international work is um, moving ahead. Uh, will be uh, a, a bigger part in in our services uh, in the uh, upcoming uh, years. Um, well, uh, I talked to you about the uh, amount of uh, data transfers we we do uh, within uh, the Netherlands, and you might ask, uh, how do we deal uh, with uh, the personal uh, data? Um, well, we comply to uh, the GDPR. And um, well, Rena stands for uh, secure, safe, reliable, and guaranteed handling of, of the data of uh, our uh, public uh, organizations. Um, what we do is uh, we authenticate uh, the sender and the receiver for the information. Um, we do the authorization of the data exchange. Is there a law? Uh, or uh, uh, a fair um, use of, of, of data. Um, we implement uh, the latest security uh, techniques. Um, well, as a, a, a small uh, point, uh, we are even in um, uh, a project uh, within the EU uh, of using uh, quantum techniques uh, to secure uh, data transfer, it's for the, the upcoming uh, 10 years, uh, but, but we do participate uh, in, the, uh, in the research uh, on that. A big point uh, is awareness of staff. As you might know, uh, uh, the biggest uh, uh, problems uh, of uh, secure data is uh, uh, staff uh, leaking uh, information by, by uh, less awareness of uh, the um, the use of it, and uh, of course we uh, uh, 
do a lot of certification and auditing words uh, on uh, our platforms. As you might see on, on uh, the left side, uh, we have uh, an ISO certification uh, on uh, secure data handling. And in the 25 years, we never lost one uh, data transfer at all. Impressive. And for such a small uh, company, we, we now we, we started with uh, one uh, uh, member of staff. Uh, and we are now on uh, in, uh, we have now employ we are now employing uh, 40 uh, staff members. So compared to, to the, the, the size of the uh, organizations we work for, it's um, it's it's very small. Indeed. That's incredible. Um, I have a question about um, the services you provide. Um, unless you want to, uh, if there's anything else you can share, please go ahead. But otherwise, I'm just going to I'm just going to ask. No, please, uh, please do. OK, um, with only 40 people um, and so many uh, organizations that you're serving, um, I would also imagine that the 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 the, the the infrastructure you provide depends on the type of data that comes in and the sort of output it's, it's supposed to give. So that you would not have a sort of a one size fits all um, infrastructure, but depending on the data, you're, you're able to customize it. Is that correct? Or do you have a, like a tool, a package, a thing that you can reuse for different organizations? Um, it, it, it is correct. Uh, uh, to this point, uh, yeah, uh, and we are now uh, setting up a, a more standard infrastructure uh, for uh, the uh, the data transfer um, using uh, the e delivery uh, building blocks. It's it's more or less uh, a, a one size fits all. Um, but um, not all uh, public services in the Netherlands uh, uses the, the same techniques, the, the same languages. Um, so Rhinus transfers uh, for these uh, uh, public organizations uh, the information in, in a more technical way uh, to help these organizations uh, reuse the data from one organization towards another. So we translate in, in a technical way uh, 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 the data uh, flows. OK, understood. Thank you. Um, and in this process, what are some of the biggest challenges or barriers that you encounter? Um, mostly it is helping organizations to understand each other problems and uh, the way uh, to effective solving these uh, these problems. Uh, most organizations that, that, that want to exchange data uh, think uh, um, uh, uh, inside out rather than outside in. And what we help in, in our advisory role to better understand each and, and look for efficient and effective uh, uh, mechanisms to to help uh, these organizations to exchange uh, data. By outside in, um, would you mean less process oriented and more citizen focused? No, no, no what's... just helping the organizations to uh, to understand uh, problems on, on either sides of of, mm. of the data exchange. Understood. And um, I have another question. I read a news uh, article, I think um, written by you, Pete, um, about the role of data sharing um, for more resilient government. And um, you, you look like you haven't written it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I found it on your website and, and it spoke to me, obviously, in um, when we're talking about resilience uh, in, in many ways lately, and what does it mean for governments, and why is data sharing supporting that? 
um, uh, what what uh, uh, um, what uh, I, I'm not, not sure where you met or you, where you have read that article. Um, um, what, what we are doing with data sharing is uh, like uh, like we're already told uh, uh, between organizations, and what we are and I'm not I'm not sure if I'm now answering your question, but. Um, uh, where we are now into involved, and one of our initiatives is to to come um, to set up in the Netherlands a, a support center for a supporting service center for uh, digital Europe. About also about the data sharing. How can we together be of better use for uh, better implement European uh, regulations, and how can we? more effectively uh, make use of uh, each other's infrastructures and um, um, uh, there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, new technologies uh, coming up uh, like Gaia uh, Gaia X uh, and how can we uh, uh, how can we benefit uh, uh, how can we make use of those those new technologies and how can we uh, uh, make benefit of, of uh, the, the knowledge uh, that there is uh, in the Netherlands, and um, what we see often, and I, I, I think that maybe also in other countries, is that uh, we everybody is doing it on his own way. But who is uh, uh, looking uh, uh, as an umbrella? Um, and we are now setting up uh, uh, some kind of a digital home uh, where uh, so, uh, where um, all the ministries or all the public services are in. Um, uh, being involved, and one of the topics topics is of course uh, uh, data sharing and data and the implementation of the data governance uh, data governance act, and uh, one of the key uh, uh, um, topics or issues is um, um, how many data will be transferred from the member states to the to the European Commission or the European Union. How can we uh, um, how can we have re uh, control about uh, on the data uh, and um, who is the owner of the data? And that is one of the topics that is uh, in the Netherlands being addressed for the for the the, 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 the digital home that's being setting up as a as a um, uh, supporting uh, center for uh, digital Europe in the Netherlands. Great, thank you. Well, we say more is less. Um, uh, as I told you, uh, in the Netherlands, we transfer more than 2 billion uh, data transfers uh, per year. And that is a lot uh, compared to uh, 70 million uh, citizens. Um, so rather than uh, transfer bulk data, uh, you see a trend towards uh, the just-in-time principle. When uh, a public organization needs data from another uh, organization, uh, you rather than uh, pick it up from bulk data, you collect it, you ask it when you need it in your working procedures, in your processes. Um, Connected to that, um, uh, as I told you, uh, a, a big trend is now to uh, give uh, citizens uh, control over the use of data uh, in uh, the public uh, sector. Um, and we see a trend towards the use of self-sovereign identity. Uh, that is a new uh, technique uh, uh, using uh, data. Uh, and it gives citizens, but also companies, uh, full control over who is uh, permitted to use your data uh, rather than uh, exchange data between uh, 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 public uh, or private uh, uh, bodies. Um, another advantage of self-sovereign identity uh, that you can um, uh, rely on the uh, authenticity of the data that is given to an organization by a citizen or or the company. So it's uh, it's uh, I think a big big step forward. 
we implemented uh, the technique of self-sovereign identity and we are now discussing uh, several use cases uh, in, the, in the field of, uh, of public organizations and it's picking up quite some speed uh, in the Netherlands. Not so much as in Germany, uh, under um, Frau Merkel, uh, there is a huge uh, initiative in, in Germany using self-sovereign identity widespread over uh, public and, and private uh, organizations. But um, we do it uh, bottom up rather than uh, uh, top down. Um, so that's a, a different uh, approach in, uh, in the Netherlands. Um, what we can see is a trend to the upcoming role of the EU. More data, electronic data exchange, less uh, paper. Uh, examples uh, uh, in uh, AC, uh, we talked about uh, earlier in this meeting, um, uh, uh, single digital gateway as a, as a big uh, initiative uh, coming up uh, in the upcoming uh, years. Um, the role of the EU is uh, uh, in delivering uh, building blocks of, of data exchange. It's um, um, a rather different approach uh, from the EU uh, than uh, the, uh, the Dutch government, but we are reusing these building blocks, uh, as I told you, in, in e-procurement, even in, uh, in Dutch data exchange uh, processes. And uh, a trend we see now um, very um, uh, widespread in, in, in private companies, combining data source sources uh, and artificial in intelligence, uh, uh, improving uh, business processes. And we see now the, the first steps for uh, uh, public uh, organizations in, uh, in combining data source to improve uh, uh, their, their, their services towards citizens uh, and companies. And uh, well, this is the, the last uh, slide of our uh, presentation. Thank you for that. Um, then I might have a, a, a one question to, to wrap it all up, um, very practical. Um, in 10 years from now, in an utopian world, where is Hennis in Europe? <laughs> well, uh, uh, if the trend uh, that the EU uh, takes a big role in, in data exchange uh, uh, between uh, countries and, and within uh, countries, uh, I think uh, Renus will rely mostly on, on the international uh, exchanges rather than uh, uh, the uh, the big data sharing, uh, bulk data sharing uh, we do now in, in the Netherlands. And well, what we see and well, what we hope see that self-sovereign identity will not only affect uh, data exchange uh, within one country, but uh, will uh, take up uh, uh, its, its course in, in the EU. There are initiatives to uh, connect these self-sovereign identity uh, initiatives in various countries so it will be possible to transfer your data by, by the, uh, the use of self-sovereign identity towards uh, other countries. And I uh, have also one last question for you. Um, is there maybe a risk that we are leaving behind rural regions or less digital institutions on our way to more digital in Europe? I mean, from a Dutch perspective, um, with the Netherlands being um, being quite digital already, would you think there's a risk for other less digital institutions or regions? Um, well, let's say yes and no. Uh, what we have seen in the Baltic states is that in a, in a green field you can speed up digital initiative in in in, uh, in, a, in an unbelievable way. Yeah. Uh, so I think uh, these countries can uh, use the uh, European initiative to uh, to to come to speed in 
in this area. But it yeah. needs uh, uh, a very uh, balanced uh, approach from uh, the EU. I yeah. Think. yeah, yeah, that should be a focus. Yeah. I, I agree. Thank you. Is there anything you'd like to touch upon that we haven't discussed? No, I think we covered uh, most uh, areas of uh, what Remus is in, what it stands for, uh, and what it will stand for in the upcoming uh, years. So thank you uh, very much uh, for this uh, interview. Thank you very much. It's very interesting to hear what you do, what, uh, what Remus does, and what you see for the future. And we're very curious uh, to see what, what's going to happen, uh, what's going to happen next. Thank you for this. Thank you. Indeed. Thank you. Mm -hmm.